Amen. 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 Yeah, give the Lord a hand. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Well, I just want to say thank you guys all so much for being here. But more than that, I want to say thank you guys. I looked out during worship and I, you know, just seeing so many people lifting their hands and worshiping God and, and getting into the presence of God. And it just, it's just amazing to see people worshiping. And I, I don't know all of you and your situations. I know a lot of you. But God knows you. God knows the difficulties, the challenges, the things that we're going through. To lift up your hands and say, God, you're the greatest. That warms God's heart. It says in the Bible, it says, God is enthroned in the midst of our praise. When we lift our hands, when we worship and we praise, God comes. And his presence is there. And, man, I hope you guys felt it. And... Uh, we're blessed today in God's presence. Today we're going to be talking about prayer. And that's why we started the way that we did. Uh, with, you know, spending five minutes praying. Application first and then, and then the word. I guess it's kind of the opposite of what we normally do. Get to the application at the end. But I really believe that, you know, prayer is one of those things where it's kind of like you got to exercise your spiritual muscles. You do it, you do it, you do it, not necessarily all the time feeling super engaged in it, and, but, but the more you do it, the stronger you get, and the better it is, and the more you grow. What is prayer? I put together a very simple definition, and I don't know what the, I didn't look it up in the dictionary, I just kind of made this up on my own, just from my own experience, and reading the Word of God. Prayer is speaking to God and asking Him to enter into a situation in order to change the situation. Prayer is speaking to God, asking Him to enter into a situation in order to change that situation. You know, there are lots of things that we can pray about. There's lots of things that we come to God about. But prayer is speaking to God, using our words, using using our, our voices to acknowledge God and to ask Him to enter into this situation in order to bring His change into that situation. You know, you look at the example of David in the Psalms. So many times he's just really flat out honest with God. You know, God, look at all my enemies are all around me. You know, they're succeeding and I'm here I am running. I don't have a place to... To, to sleep, I don't have a place, you know, I don't have a house of my own. Here I am running away, all my enemies are all around me. He's acknowledging the situation, and he's praising God in that situation in order for God to come and do a miracle and bring a change in that situation, and that's what he's, that's what he's doing. And I see lots of examples in other parts of the Bible where people pray, and they cry out to God, say, God, look, this is the situation. I am in this situation. It's tough. It's hard. It's real. We can be humble and honest. Say, God, look, this is the way it is. But God, come. God, come into this situation to bring a transformation. And that's what I believe prayer is. When someone prays, what does it show about that person when they pray? When someone prays, what does it show about that person? It shows a person's faith in God. If you don't have faith that there is a God and that God can do something, you're not going to pray. Right? You don't just, you don't just find people, random people praying. That, you, know, you, don't, you don't even think that there's a God or think that God can do something. Faith shows, or sorry, prayer shows a person's faith. I believe that God can move in my situation, so I pray. I believe that, first of all, I believe that there is a God. I believe that he's alive. I believe that he's powerful. I believe that he knows. And I believe that he's going to move in my situation. Prayer 
shows a person's faith. Prayer shows somebody's dependence on God. If someone thinks, oh, I got it. I can control my own life. I can do it my own way. I can do it myself. I can improve myself. Then they don't pray because they think, they, hey, I can just do it on my own. Prayer shows a person's dependence on God. They know who their God is, but they also know that God is a heavenly father and that we're his kids and that he's got a purpose and a plan for us and he wants good for our lives. So prayer shows faith, but prayer also shows our dependence on God. Prayer shows that a person believes that God rules and reigns in heaven. If we believe that we truly have a God and that he rules and reigns from heaven, that he is involved in our day-to-day -day lives, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to say, God, come on. I know. I know that you're involved in this. I know that I'm not alone. So I pray. Prayer shows belief that God is a good God. We sang about it just a few minutes ago. In all your ways, you are good. In all your ways, you are good. Prayer shows belief that God is good. God, I believe that you're good. I believe that you want to make good out of this situation, so I pray. So I say, God, come. So I say, God, enter into my life and enter, enter into my situation. Prayer shows trust in God. Prayer shows trust in God. Honestly, I think trust is one of the most challenging things that we face as a believer. Because trust is saying, God, you got this. <laughs> Laying our head on our pillow at night and resting in his goodness. Sometimes that's really, really challenging to do. Sometimes it's hard just to say, God, I trust you. When things are kind of messy all around us, when we don't know the solution, we don't know what things are going to, you know, what the end result is going to be, trust. Trust. Prayer shows trust in God. But as a person prays, it displays all of these things. Faith, dependence, trust, belief in his goodness. All of these things. And I would say that the more a person prays, the deeper these levels of things are displayed in their lives. The more that a person has faith in God, the more they're going to pray. The more that they are dependent on God, the more they're going to pray. The more that they believe in God's goodness, the more they're going to pray. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 to 18. I think we have it up on the screen there. It says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Obviously, we would look at verse 17, pray without ceasing. Not necessarily meaning that 24-7 we're locked away in our prayer closet praying and praying and praying, though, you know, some of us could use a good 24 hours in the presence of God me included. But I think what this is thinking, I think what this is saying to us is that in every situation, include God. Include God in every situation. You know, prayer doesn't just have the idea of coming to God when we have needs. There are several words in, in the Bible that are used uh, for prayer, both in the Greek and in the Hebrew. And some of them actually have the idea of worship. And it's a, a worship. A, a, it's kind of like what we did is saying, God, I make a place for you in my life and in my situation. It's worshiping God and saying, King of kings, come in. You know, David wrote a psalm that says, Who is this King of glory? The Lord God Almighty. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, that the King of glory may come in. It's that worship. It's that receiving of the King 
into our lives and into our situations. It's praying without ceasing. It's always being, it's always being conscious of the presence of God in whatever situation we're in, whether we're driving in our car, or driving our moto, or in the meeting. God, I want, I want your presence here in this situation. It's praying without ceasing. Here's a couple of quotes um, about prayer. Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Is prayer your steering wheel or your spare tire? Your steering wheel, you always have your hands on it. You're always using that. When do you use a spare tire? Only when there's an emergency, right? If you can find it. <laughs> Sometimes you can't even find your spare tire. I don't even know where my spare tire is. But is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? You know who said that quote? Corey Ten Boom. Corey Ten Boom said that. He said, is, is prayer your steering wheel? Are you using it all the time, all the time? Your hands are on the steering wheel, all the time praying? Or is it just something you use only in emergencies? God wants us to have prayer as our steering wheel. Prayer does not change God but it changes the person who prays. Prayer, a lot of the time, is, is us getting our hearts right before God. Is getting our hearts... I guess I don't need the mic anymore. Prayer is getting our hearts right before God. It's, it's opening up our hearts and saying, God, you know, I'm in this situation too. We said at the beginning, prayer is inviting God into the situation, but honestly, we're a part of that situation as well. And as we are a part of that situation, sometimes the change that God wants to do is actually in us. Sometimes he wants us to respond better in love. Sometimes he wants us to respond better in faith. Sometimes he wants us to respond better in hope. What if the situation that God wants to change, the part of the situation that God wants to change is actually us? Prayer does that because we come into the presence of God, we start to see things from God's point of view, and He begins that change in us. We come away with hope for a situation rather than worry and despair. We come away with, with love rather than hurt and anger and unforgiveness. God wants to change us as we pray as well. Corey Ten Boom said another thing about prayer. She said, any concern that is too small to be turned into a prayer is too small to be made into a burden. So basically what she's saying, if it's big enough to worry about, it's big enough to pray about. If you're not going to pray about it, don't worry about it. <laughs> That's what she's encouraging us to do, is pray, pray, pray. Bring things to God in prayer. What is the posture of prayer? The posture of prayer is humility. It's turning to God and saying, God, your way, not my way. Your will, not my will. Listen to these verses, in, one in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 to 13. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. We often quote that verse, verse 11, but listen to verse 12 and 13. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. God is here and real, and he's available for our situations. Amen? Amen? There is nothing that God cannot do. There's no situation that's too difficult. There's no change that he can't make. Have faith today. Have hope today. Invite him into that situation. He is the way. 
He is the truth. He is the life. Believe it. Pray it. Expect it. God is a God of miracles. Amen? God is a God of miracles. What should the subject of our prayer be? The subject of prayer is God's will. Matthew 6, verse 10. God says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Sometimes it's difficult to know exactly what to pray. Sometimes the situation is very, very complex. We don't know if this is right or that's wrong. This person's in the right. God, what do you want to do in me? Pray this prayer. God, let your will be done in this situation. Sometimes it's too complex for us to figure out all the pieces to the, to the situation, to our need. But God knows. God knows what this person needs, what that person needs, the, the heart change that that person needs. He knows what I need. He knows the change that I need in my own life, my own perspective shift that, that, that he wants to bring to me. God knows all that. So pray. God, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Just like we sang about yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. So a good prayer to always pray is, God, let your will be done. Let your will be done. Things that are, that line up with God's character, things like righteousness. God always wants to see righteousness in situations. Justice. We can pray justice in unjust situations. Love, health, strength, mercy, grace, restoration, repentance. All these things are in alignment with God's will and God's desire. So we can pray, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. But also, once again, sometimes the change is within us. Sometimes God wants to give us the strength to persevere in difficult situations. You know, Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He said, pray this prayer. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. But he also prayed that prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane as well. He said, God, not my will, but your will be done. He said, not my will, God, but your will be done. And sometimes we got to go through the difficult things. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just, God, give me the strength to display your glory even in the difficulties, even in the hardness, even in the things that I don't understand. I want to bring you glory with my life. We can't control all that's around us, but we can control that. Say, God, I surrender to you. I make place for you as well. So what can we do? What can we do in order to have a prayerful lifestyle is to always pray, pray continually, pray in faith, pray knowing that God is a God who is with us. God is a God who is good. God is a God who is in control. God is a God who is near. God is a God who is with us. Have a prayerful lifestyle. Invite him into every situation of your life. Make a place for God in your life and in your situation. It's interesting, sometimes we can say, God, I want you in this part of my life, but then over here on this part, uh, I kind of like the way it is without you, God. But let's say this, let's, let's commit to God. I'm God, I'm going to give you all of me. I'm going to give all of me. I'm going to surrender everything to you. Every part, every situation, I believe. Sometimes we can hold on to unforgiveness. Let that go. Let that go. And say, God, I make a place for you in my heart, and I forgive. Sometimes we are hanging on to this or hanging on to that. Let it go. Making room for God, making a place for God is actually pushing things aside. 
and saying, God, I make a place for you. From starting on the 16th, January 16th until February 5th, we're going to do 21 days, 21 days of prayer and fasting, three weeks. And I just want to encourage you, you know, we have about a week until then. I just want to encourage you, ask the Lord this week, ask God, what is it that you want me to push aside? What is it that you want me to do in order to make a place for you? Maybe it's social media. Maybe it's Facebook. Okay, I'm going to push that aside to make a place for you. Maybe it's, you know, you take a few days to, to, to fast, to fast food and, and just say, God, I'm going to make a place for you. Maybe it's different things that you want to, maybe it's new habits that you want to start. You know, I want to start reading the Bible more. I'm making a place for God. Begin those new habits. Begin those new things. Make a place for God to allow Him to continue to work and to help you to grow. So that's going to be 21 days uh, starting January 16th until February the 5th. We're also going to have, every day we're going to have prayer online uh, at 6 a.m. And also at noon we're going to have prayer meetings here at the church. And we just want to encourage whoever wants to come it's open. You guys are welcome to come. We'll be, uh, make sure we're still doing social distancing and all of that as we go. But we want to encourage you guys to come to that. And on the 15th, we're actually going to be having a prayer seminar to kind of kick things off. I have a couple of our elders from the church here who are going to minister that evening on prayer. And so that's going to be on the 15th. And then that will launch us into the 21 days of prayer and fasting. But in everything that we do, let's make sure that we're making a place for the Lord in our lives. Amen? Amen? Let's begin 2021 with God. I, I, I don't want to just make it for this first month, but I want to start something new. I want to start a new habit. I want to start a new lifestyle. You know, they say it takes a minimum of 21 days to start a new habit. Well, this is a good way to get into that habit of spending time with God and consciously making place, making that room for God in our lives. Amen? Let's do this together. Because I believe 2021 is going to be a great year. I know God wants to do some great things in all of your lives. Amen? How many believe that? How many people want... God to do something great in your life. Amen. Let's believe him. Let's have faith and let's display that faith by expecting God to do great things as we pray. Amen. Let's all stand up together. Let me pray for you again. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are involved in our lives, oh God. And as many people as are here in the, in the room today represents so many different situations in our lives, so many life experiences, so many things that we have gone through and so many things that we are currently going through. Oh God, you are a God who is intimately involved in every situation of our lives. Psalm 139 says that you have written the days of our lives in your book. Wow, what an honor that is, God. We thank you for that. God, today we want this day to be a day that is written where you have your place in our lives, where you have your way in our lives, where you have your will be done in our lives and where we see great and awesome miracles and changes to our situations. Jesus, we thank you that you are real and live and active and powerful. We believe in you. We believe in the power of your word and in your truth. God, we believe in you. God, we thank you so much. We give you our hearts and our lives and we give you our time and our strength 
in our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Pray continuously. Amen? Amen. Bless you.